Today's adventure brings us to Black Mountain. We will be taking the Chippewa Trail all the way to the summit. Heading down this way for number 85 on the New Hampshire Fire Tower list of the 93 towers that are standing. Once stood, all were proposed. The trail starts out going down. Never a good sign. The trail is blazed in yellow. Freshly painted too, it looks like. So we've come up to the trail to the logging road where the kilns are located. So we are going to head this way to find all the kilns. So in the middle of the woods is these apple trees that are right above the lime kilns. Yeah, these are stoves and they would put the limestone in there and they would heat it until it turned into a white powdery lime. It was in 1837 where limestone was first discovered at the base of Sugarloaf Mountain. And then shortly thereafter, a large amount was found here at Black Mountain. These are actually the second kilns that were built. And as we go along, you see this is the lower section where they have a couple of ovens in it. And I'll show you the other oven over here. These were used until 1888 and they produced 300,000 casks per year of lime. Then, in this direction. Those are the oldest. And is where we're headed to now. This, is the, this one is the big one. Look at that. That stands over 20 feet high. So let's take a pause here and we'll go up and see it. Well, Chuck looks for the geocache. Just a little information on how the kiln worked. And a little information about the Black Mountain kilns themselves. You wanted a pepperoni pizza? I have in just a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so this is one of the largest kilns. It is an impressive structure. This is where they would take the powder out. We're going to go up top to where they would put the limestone in. There's actually stairs that go up to the top. This place is very cool. Hold on, I want to get the side. And this is the other side. So they must have used all sides of the kiln. Well, they just said something about fire stroking in here. Not fire sure what that is. Stroking. Fire stroking. He was stroking a fire. Stroking. Oh. There's the trail coming up. I am standing on top of the 20 foot oven now. That's how it all looks down there. This whole area is maintained by the Heritage Committee for the town of Haverhill. That's why it still looks in great shape when you get out here. And I'd like to personally thank them for maintaining this. This is nice. Okay, so we're standing on top of it now. And I'm getting near the edge. <laughs> wow. As I pan down. Yeah, I wouldn't want to fall down in there. But this is where they would drop the limestone in to have it heated. Found Helm's Deep geocache. So we're going to do what we do, and then we'll be back. While searching for a geocache, we ran across this little guy. What's up, pal? You don't know where the geocache is, do you? I found fire on the mountain. <laughs> the geocache. I think the frog told her where it was. He wouldn't tell me, though. <laughs> All right, back to the matter at hand now. Black Mountain. But if you come out here, definitely take the side trip. These are worth it. Wonder where we are? Well, we're in the Kingsbury Chippewa Trail Forest. And we're still on what appears to be a logging road. If you've been following along with this series of our fire tower quests, then you'll know that the last few have <laughs> been bushwhacks. This is very, very nice. Spiderweb. Must be a temporary dwelling for him. As he gets his house fixed. Or rebuilds on this old cellar hole. Right on the side of the trail. Right, so we found some up. But like I said, the trail, it's clean. These boulders are actually helping. And as we get up here, it's gonna be stairs. We're 0.63 from the summit. This trail's not bad at all. So the forest just completely changed its whole appearance. I wonder if there's one of the reasons that they call it Black Mountain. I know the names originated because all the mountains named Black appear to be dark. Okay, we're here at a lookout. I'm gonna guess and say Sugarloaf. I could be wrong. But as I pan around, it is a very, very humid day. Right now there's a light breeze blowing and we are loving it. Zoom out a little. I'm panning around. 
as I come around. Little undercast over there. So we've come up to some ledge and it's all wet. It's not overly slippery, so we're doing okay. Came to another outlook. Right to where the undercast was. So right after that outlook we came to this joy of going up that is all wet. But as you can see where my lovely wife is going, you skirt to the side. Looks like that's what people have been doing. And you get some dirt. And again, with the ever-changing scenery on this trail, it's like they came through with hedge clippers. <laughs> it's a clear-cut path right through here. We're about a quarter mile from the summit now. And we're moving on. Look, a picnic area. Pretty flat with a slight slant to it. Let's just see if it's a cliff or not. Well, let's see if I can get close enough without my vertigo kicking in. There's a slight breeze blowing too. Uh, it's not a sheer drop. But I'm watching my footing carefully. Oh, well, something would stop me before hitting the bottom. <laughs> <laughs> this is what we're saying. It's really hazy. There are some clouds out there, and as I pan to the right, I'm glad we're not hiking something out there. And no, this isn't the summit, in case you're wondering. We are almost there, but we saw this, thought we'd come by. Not a lot of red paint spread along this trail, and I can actually see that with my red color deficiency, so. Someone's bleeding red paint. But anyway, as I pan up, that will be our destination, I'm quite sure. And once again, <laughs> the trail conditions inside the forest have changed. This is a nice wide trail. I think we're skirting up around the cone to the summit right now. So, it's kind of cool to handle. So at the trail junction with the Black Mountain Trail, heading up to the summit. The Black Mountain Trail used to be the fire tower road to get up here, so it's a little easier than the trail that we took. Welcome to the summit of Black Mountain in Benton. They did have a fire tower up here. It's 1911, one of the other ones from the New Hampshire Timberland Owners Association. It was made of wood and it had an open top. It was replaced with a 20-foot steel tower with an enclosed cab. It was transferred to the White Mountain National Forest in 1939. The tower received damage in the 1938 hurricane, and they believe that it was rebuilt, maybe by the CCC, because the administrative atlas shows it as being 28 feet high. It was manned until 1964. It was removed from service and destroyed in 1978. Definitely some unique markings. On the ledge up here. What do you got, babe? I got a geocache. Ah, is that the Blackview geocache? It is. Oh, well, let's shut the camera up and do what we do. Okay, so we're back down from the summit, number 85 in the bag. And by the way, the 1.9 is more accurate than the 1.6 on the trail reports that I read. So, until our next adventure, the end. <laughs>